Hey guys, so there's been this really interesting post on Wowhead recently, which is part of their new weekly Mythic Plus feature, where they interview some of the best PvEers from the Method Guild. And in one of the recent Q&As, they actually discussed a very interesting topic, and that is, what are the most useful professions for Mythic Plus? So in this video, I will cover what they said, as well as what I think will change in Battle for Razoroth looking at the data mine info. So, the question here says, what are the best professions to have for Mythic Plus Keystone Grinding? And the response is, the two standouts are Alchemy and Engineering because those will be the source of most consumables you're using. Alchemy will let you craft your own flasks and potions of prolonged power and give you 2 hour flask durations instead of the usual 1 hour. It will also let you make Skaggle Drink and Skype Step Potion which are respectively the invisibility and movement speed potions. Engineering lets you craft failure detection pylon and item repair items like auto hammer. So the failure detection pylon is something that resurrects your whole party if you wipe, and the auto hammer is essentially a repair bot. So one thing of note is that all these items listed so far can be bought regardless if you have the profession or not. Aside from the additional hour of flask duration you get from alchemy, and just the added convenience of being able to craft these items on demand. But let's move on. So the next part says, Additionally, engineering gives you access to some enchants that are useful in Mythic Plus. The most obvious is Frag Belt, which allows you to interrupt groups of mobs, and is critical for big pulls in high keys. Another is the Flex Weave Underlay, which gives you a slow fall effect, and can be useful in some dungeons with Z-axis elements. Meaning dungeons with a lot of like vertical height where you can glide and stuff. Now this would actually give a pretty big edge to engineers over other professions because these enchants require you to have engineering. Next, he also briefly acknowledges the usefulness of enchanting as a way to acquire extra enchanting mats, but this doesn't have a direct impact on how efficiently you can clear a Mythic Plus dungeon. Another thing he mentioned is, as most of us already know, uh, in the Court of Stars, there are many profession-specific perks that you can do to make the instance a little easier. Then again, this is only one dungeon, and it remains to be seen if Blizzard will implement something like this in Battle for Azeroth. I personally think that these types of dungeon-specific perks are too difficult to balance. That said, it does look like Blizzard is making moves to try to balance out the professions even more, and we will discuss that shortly. But for now, according to this guy from Method, you can't go wrong with Alchemy and Engineering for Legion. Now, let's look at some of the new profession changes made in BFA so far. Alchemy has largely stayed the same, except they received some BOE trinkets that don't require Alchemy to use. And it seems to be the trend that every crafting profession is getting more uh, craftable gear, to possibly compete with weapons coming back for blacksmithing. It's similar to how every crafting profession could make relics in Legion. So in Battle for Razoroth, since relics will become obsolete, we're just replacing them with new and different crafts. Alchemy is also getting back its transmutes, including one to make a pet, and another that actually makes Expulsum, five of them in fact, which are the new uh, Blood of Sargeras for Battle for Razoroth. Next, looking at blacksmithing, they are getting hoof plates and stirrups back, which increase your mounted speed and allow you to interact on your mount, respectively. Again, since artifact weapons are going away, blacksmiths will be getting back weapon and shield crafting. Another interesting thing is that they actually get to make the monolite reinforced chassis, which is actually a component for a new mount in collaboration with something that engineers can also craft. By the way, this new mount is called the Zywilag ATV, which is actually the leader of the goblins, Gallywix's name in reverse. Next, we finally have our first look at the Kasgorian Hammer. It reads, Allows the user to repair all their equipment in an instant. One hour cooldown. When crafting blacksmithing armor or weapons, there's a chance it'll be given the indestructible property. So this is definitely a very very cool item, and I assume that the repair will be free. So if we scroll down to cooking, uh, there hasn't been much information on it yet, so we're skipping it. And looking at enchanting, nothing too much is changing, except some of the weapon enchants promote this type of burst window gameplay. 
but ultimately it'll be up to the theory crafters to tell us which ones are best for which specialization. There are some bracer enchants that augment your hearthstone as well, and finally they can craft wands. Next, looking at engineering, they're getting lots of new uh, flavor and utility items, including the second half of the Zibwilak ATV mount we just talked about. And with the new bombs that they can make, I can see how these could be really really useful in Mythic Plus. And along with relics going away, engineers are actually going to be able to craft one-handed maces. And moving on to inscription, man I think they're going to be really good in Battle for Azeroth. Not only are they getting contracts that increase reputation gains when you're doing world quests, they're also getting these raid buff war scrolls, which could be really useful in Mythic Plus, more so than raiding because uh, when you have 5 people in a group, there's less of a chance that you'll have coverage of the raid buffs. So I strongly recommend having inscription for the first character you level through Battle for Razoroth, because I think these contracts here are going to be an extremely high demand at the beginning of the expansion. And aside from all this new stuff and already inheriting what they have from Legion, they're also going to be able to craft offhands. Moving on to jewel crafting, it's pretty much staying the same except uh, neck pieces are not going to be a thing anymore because of the heart of Azeroth. So in their place, jewel crafters are going to be going back to crafting rings. Additionally, they're going to be able to make staves. And what's interesting is that these seem to be mage specific staves. There's also going to be the 5% EXP gem, which could be useful because we can assume that heirlooms are not going to be upgradable to level 120 yet in Battle for Azeroth, or at least at the beginning of Battle for Azeroth. Next, looking at leatherworking, it's pretty much going to be the same. They have the leather barding, which uh, reduces your chances of being dazed, and the drums as well. And the new stuff is fist weapons and bows and scuba gear, which uh, usefulness has yet to be determined. Finally, last but not least, moving on to tailoring. The new bags they'll be able to make will be 30 and 32 slaughters, which will definitely cause a decrease in relevance of hexleaf bags. The most notable new thing they can make are battle flags, but their functionality hasn't been revealed yet. Though I can imagine them filling a niche such as Stampeding Roar or Aspect of the Pact, but we'll have to see. Lastly, nets are coming back, and they can only be used by tailors, and they could be useful in PvE and PvP. Oh, and in case you didn't know, first aid is being removed in BFA, with bandages being moved into tailoring. But unfortunately, nobody really uses them anyway. And that is the end of my report. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe and punch that notification bell. And now that I've gotten invited into the alpha, I'll be able to provide more coverage just like this on my channel. See you guys and peace out.